I've been wanting to make a clip on Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18, for a good while now. Um, this verse concerns how the Almighty promises that he will raise up a prophet after Moses who will command the people of Israel. And the Almighty will speak to the people of Israel through them. So this verse is popularly used both by Muslims and Christians as a proof or prophecy that their leaders are the specific leader referred to in this prophecy to the exclusion of other people apparently. <laughs> so I want to uh, examine this verse in light of the Hebrew text. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 18. <laughs> A prophet I will raise up for them from among their brethren, like you. And I will place my words in his mouth. And he will speak to them according to all that I will command him. Alright, first thing to notice here is that it begins by saying, Novi Okim, a prophet I will raise up. If it were to be a specific prophet, then why does this, the verse begin without using the definite article? First hand, that's the first point. The definite article in Hebrew is ha, in Arabic is al. I don't know exactly, I think you would say anabi uh, or something like this. In Hebrew, Hanavi. So here it just says Novi. It doesn't say Hanavi. It doesn't say the prophet I will raise up. It says a prophet I will raise up. All right. Now let's continue because it does, in the continuing verses, use the definite article, the prophet. All right. So I'll retranslate that for you. Uh, a prophet I will raise up for them from among their brethren, like you, and. I will give my words in his mouth, and he will speak to them all that I will command him. All right, now the next verse. And it will be that the man who does not listen to my words, which he, the prophet, shall speak in my name, I will require it from him. All right. Now here, um, we find a similar thing. That it's saying, Ho Ish, the man. So are we going to say that this prophecy and the commandment concerning prophets to come, or the prophet to come, be it Muhammad or, or Yeshu, Jesus, either case, are we going to say that only this one man, only one man in the future will be able to violate his, his, his commandments? Because it says in verse 19, the man, in Hebrew, ho ish, ish is man, ho is the. All right, let's continue. Verse 20, Now, same people also want to say, whether in reference to Muhammad or in reference to Yeshua, in reference to Jesus, that since this, it's clear from this verse that their respective leaders are the intended subject of the prophecy here, in reference to a future prophet, uh, because it says he will be like Moses. Now, although I cannot deny that certain commonalities exist between these particular individuals and Moses, even though I don't follow either of these individuals, I don't see how we can deny that there have been many other prophets who have arisen that have even more in common with Moses. People who led the people of Israel on a whole back to serving the Almighty and to uh, abandon idolatry when they backslid and, and went back to idolatry. This is the uh, mission of of many of the prophets recorded in the Tanakh and the Hebrew Bible. And interestingly enough, 
the Almighty himself testifies to a particular prophet as being like Moses. And this prophet arose immediately after Moses departed. In fact, Moses himself talked to this individual. That individual is Yeshua, Joshua. We find in Joshua chapter 1, verse 5, and in Joshua chapter 4, verse 14, that he was comparable to Moses. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that they have all the same uh, occurrences in life or teach uh, new commandments, just as Moses brought new commandments. To the contrary, um, if we look in Deuteronomy chapter 13, in the same book of Deuteronomy 18, 18, we'll find additional conditions upon which a uh, prophet is known to be a valid prophet or an invalid prophet. Let's turn there. This is very important to know. Deuteronomy chapter 13. Although Deuteronomy chapter 18 says that the prophet whom he will raise, who, we, who the Almighty will uh, raise up, will teach commandments, this is in the context of what has already been said regarding prophets that we are not to take away nor add to, to to the Torah, the instruction commanded by Moses. What does that mean? The instruction commanded by Moses was given forever, to be upheld by the people of Israel in all their generations forever, as it says in Deuteronomy 29, verse 29. He has given the revealed things to us forever to do all the words or matters of this Torah total of Moses. All right, uh, chapter 13. It begins. If kol had a word, a share on a he must have wear a chem a third fish meru, la was if Luther Seth or all wrote the Rami Manu. All the matters that I have commanded you, you should do. To, and keep them. You should not add to them and not take away from them. Alright?